Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Kumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-15. When we last heard from our band of heroes, they had defeated a fiend with several near casualties. After using their healing potions and spells, the group opted to rest a bit longer, giving them time for spell and further healing recovery to take effect. After the uneventful break, the party decided to continue forward as opposed to returning back home where they had been. We continue now after an hour's worth of travel down deeper into the mountain. That is the large pile of bones, said Phidias in hushed tones. With weapons drawn, the group fanned out in the large cave. I hear the sound of waves crashing at the opening, said Brother Stance of the Verte Order, and he, along with Harris the Mage, moved to the opening to examine it. Grish, the Zenobian cleric, moved past the jumble of bones towards a pile of glittering bricks. I found the previous silver bars, he exclaimed joyfully. There is some sort of saliva on the top bars as he wiped his fingers across the top. Uh, guys, said Yolanda, I think we are in the right place. Sir Omel, kneeling next to her, rose to his feet holding a shiny black item in his hands. What is it, said Phidias the gnome. A dragon scale, and there are quite a few of them here. As the rogue and cleric began to move to the other side of the cave, a shout was heard, followed by a whoosh and a foul odor. Who dares defile my home? As the adventurers turned, they observed Brother Stance knocked to the ground next to a large black dragon. With no mage in sight, the group feared the scream came from Harris. I am Razelle, and this is my home. Drop your belongings and flee with your lives, the beast boomed into the cave. A quick look at the monk showed that he was breathing but stunned under the creature's wing. Phidias began to hug the wall near Grish and moved forward slowly. The cleric, Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, and Yolanda Two Blades fanned out and moved towards the dragon. Beast, I claim this silver in the name of King Pellet of the Denali, said Grish. You have extorted the wealth from the people he protects, and I hereby order you to surrender the wealth and leave this land. Order? You are ordering me, mouthpiece of the king, said Rizal. I order you to drop your belongings and submit yourselves for punishment. How do you like that, Zenobian? The cleric looked to his right as Sir Omel spoke to the dragon. Foul creature, by all the gods I will smite thee with great vengeance. Surrender now. The trio gripped their weapons as the creature spread its right wing, smashing the gnome into the cave. Do not attempt to sneak around me, creature, blasted the dragon, as Phidias crumpled to his knees from the concussion against the wall. Yolanda let out a war cry as she, the knight of Bacchus, and Grish charged forward. The dragon met their charge with a swipe of his taloned foot, catching and spinning the large cleric into the heavily armored knight, knocking both to the ground. The swipe had torn open the Zenobian, but missed the other two. Reacting quickly, Yolanda was able to leap over the pair and slash the dragon near the neckline, opening its flesh, causing it to yowl out in pain. The dragon moved quickly, attempting to bite the female warrior, but missed narrowly, snapping its teeth next to her chin. Grish and Sir Omel rolled to their feet as Phidias lunged towards the thorax of the creature, stabbing it several times with his dagger, but took another wing buffet to the head. The action caused him to get knocked to the ground again, and he lost his grip on his dagger. A swift turn of the large head hit Sir Omel on the side, smashing him to a rock pillar in the center of the cave, knocking him down yet again. Grish swung his weapon quickly, connecting to the face of Razel, knocking out a tooth of the creature. Piece by piece, if I must, I will bring you to justice, yelled out the cleric, but his joy was short-lived as the dragon talon slashed Yolanda, causing her to scream out in pain 
biting down on the cleric's leg with his mouth with his other attack. Phidias regained his footing and pulled out two more daggers hidden among his clothing and he raked the right side of the creature, sending blood pouring out onto the stone floor. Brother Stance finally regained his senses and did a flying kick to the elongated neck of the dragon before grabbing the beast's short horns atop her head. A twang was heard and that came from a hand crossbow held by a bloodied Sir Omel. True to the mark, the bolt struck the black dragon in the eye, but it also slashed the monk who was being tossed around. Losing his grip, the monk tumbled down next to a gashed Yolanda, who weakly hit the creature again with one sword while missing with the other as she tripped over the bloody monk. Rizel swung her head, sending Grish skittering across the floor, suffering yet another wound as Phidias dug both blades into the dragon's side and wing before being kicked forward, sliding across the cave floor as well. Writhing in pain, Rizel screamed about her eye and her chest began to change colors. Leaning back, and she hit the top of the cave with her head as she blew forth a acid spatter, striking Yolanda, Grish, Brother Stance, and Phidias. Sir Omel was able to get behind his shield, thereby protecting his body from the acid, but the shield began to dissolve as he tossed it aside. In between the screams of pain, the smell and sizzle was horrific, and the dragon looked squarely at the paladin with her one good eye. Your time has come, holy warrior. You have no more friends, screamed the wounded worm. Seriously injured, with blood trailing down his leggings, the two squared off. Several feints by both parties saw a few blows landed by the paladin, but each step he became slower and slower in his movements. Wound taking its toll, sir knight, said the dragon. Time to die, he, as he, the dragon mocked him and she reared back preparing another blast of her corrosive breath weapon, but a loud crack was heard, knocking the knight backwards. Sir Omel looked in horror as the dragon's muscle locked and her one eye opened wide. A burning smell filled the now silent room and the creature collapsed atop the unconscious monk and fighter. Sir Omel dropped to his knees and crawled forward towards the maw of the dragon. A gasp expelled from the beast, Caused, and caused the knight to bury his blade into the remaining good eye, killing the creature outright. His eyes blinking in pain, the knight made out a limping form coming from around the side of the deceased monster, but as the pain overtook him, he could not see who it was. Fearing his own death was imminent from the new threat, he passed out, breaking his nose in the fall to the stone as darkness overtook him. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.